Austin events have like around 5 million subscribers, but still he's replying to, uh, to his subscribers' comments. That's why to address all this issues you need to automate your social media effort Gary V's uh, content distribution strategy is different you don't know you may find your next subscriber on Twitter uh, if you notice Vogue is obviously um, a very popular magazine and here they are trying to promote uh, a video where Kendall Jenner is present um, in this case as you can see it's a very short title it's not a well elaborate title there are close to 62 percent of the world that is creating long and short form videos at the moment okay so he is the king of transitions if you see all his videos are about illusions welcome up again everyone thanks for joining today's session this is praveen from pickmaker if you are a pickmaker user the emails that you are receiving are actually from me yes i am the email and uh, webinar guy at uh, pickmaker we have joe with us from the steve ai team okay if you are closely following steve ai social media accounts joe doesn't need an introduction she's an artist as well as a superstar at steve ai marketing joe do you want to you know say hi again hi everyone uh, i'm joan and i take care of the visual content marketing bit of steve.ai um, and i'm super excited to be doing this webinar with you and um, I hope my inputs could be of some use to all of you and you could take something back at the end of this webinar. And I think that's what we're hoping and we're looking forward to at the end of it, right, Praveen? Thanks for the brief uh, introduction, Joe. So guys, uh, this webinar is all about AI powered YouTube profits. So in this session, you learn to unlock YouTube monetization and we'll share some secrets to boost your fan base beyond 1K. That's not all. We'll share some creative strategies to get, uh, you know, 4,000 watch hours fast. And finally, uh, we'll show you some hacks and tips to go viral on YouTube, especially using YouTube shots. Stay with us till the end because a surprise gift is waiting for the most active uh, participants. I repeat, stay with us till the end because a surprise gift is waiting for you. So uh, please use the chat box uh, if you have any queries during the session. We'll also have a dedicated Q&A session in the end. With that saying, let's jump into the session. So unlocking YouTube monetization. To do that, you need three keys. The first one is minimum thousand subscribers. Why YouTube has said this, uh, you know, uh, limitation? Because YouTube believes that you creators who have thousand followers are, you know, trustworthy. All right. Only uh, creators who reach this mil uh, milestone would be able to unlock YouTube monetization. And you need any of these two minimum requirements. The first one is you need to have 4,000 watch hours in the past 12 months, or you need to have 10 million public shots views in the last 90 days. This may uh, look like an Herculean uh, task, especially the last one. What do you think, Joe? So is this is this tough to reach all <laughs> these milestones? Well, with the strategies that we're going to give out, I don't think so. I'm sure they'll be able to. Let's be optimistic there. <laughs> All right. We are going to split this session into three uh, parts. Uh, like uh, in the first part, we'll show you how to gain 1,000 followers fast. And in the second part, we'll help you with tricks and trips on how to reach 4,000 watch hours. And in the last part, we'll help you uh, with uh, some tips on how to, you know, gain 10 million public shots views. So uh, let's dive into the first part. The first one is subscriber explosion. Okay, the first tip I would say is you need to create a memorable brand identity. All right, you can you can do that with two things. The first one is you need to create a brand logo. These are brand logos of top YouTubers. Okay, if uh, even if I didn't add their YouTube channel names here, you may recognize them. The first one is the YouTube uh, YouTube channel, Mr. Beast. And the second one is College Humor. And the last one is the Infographic Show. All right. These logos are created in such a way that they kept, you know, brand remembrance in mind. You need to create a 
a logo for your YouTube channel just like this. And the second one is you need to create a YouTube banner. These are some ins uh, inspirations from the top creators. The first one is from Mick BHT, and the second one is Vsauce, and the third one is the famous Austin Events YouTube banner. But we need to keep this in mind. Many of us are not graphic designers. All right. We may be, you know, video editors, video content creators, but most of us are not graphic designers. How can we create a logo for our YouTube channel? How can we create an engaging YouTube banner? With PicMaker, you can do that. With PicMaker, anybody can create a logo because we have tons of templates. Uh, you, can, um, your, you can have a gaming channel. You can have a cooking channel. You name it. We have everything for you. And these are the three best practices you need to uh, keep in mind while creating a logo for your YouTube channel. All right. The first one is you need to research your target audience. All right. You can have a gaming YouTube channel. Your audience may uh, like a logo with vibrant color and vibrant vibrant shapes. Uh, all right. Uh, red goes well with that. Red is supposed to invoke that em uh, emotion. Uh, or if you have a health and fit fitness channel, you can use the color green on your logo because whenever you see the color green, your heart rate will get reduced. All right. Two things. First one is you need to research your target audience. And the second one is you need to learn the color psychology. You can, you should fuse these two and create an engaging logo. And the second tip is your logo should be adaptable. Okay. If you add your logo on a black background, it should not, you know, merge with the background. And if you add it to a white background, it should not merge. Okay. Uh, the thing is, you're not only going to update this in your channel art, but you're going to use this logo inside your videos. So your logo should be adaptable to different backgrounds. And the third one is you need to create a unique symbol or icon as part of your logo. There are different types of logos, right? Mascot. Uh, mascot logo like the kfc one or abstract uh, logo that the thing that works on youtube is the symbols and shapes all right if you add symbols or icons inside your youtube logo it triggers brand remembrance and these are the three things you should avoid while creating a logo for your youtube channel first one is you should not overload details okay what is the difference between these to uh, logos. Let's see the chat box now. You can guess, you can take a guess. What do you think, Joe? Mm. I mean, they both seem okay to me, but one seems, yeah, I think I'll just wait for the audience to reply. <laughs> RJ is saying too much information, amount of information, second one is better. Yes, the second one is better, but why? The eye doesn't capture the logo. One on the left is too busy. The name can't say everything. Someone One is cluttered. cluttered and... yes. Yeah, that's it. You got it. You got it. So the second one is minimal, right? You need to create a logo which is minimal. You should not overload information inside your logo. You have other things like YouTube banner, your your uh, you know YouTube channel description, and all that to. Uh, to convey more about your channel, but logo is not the right place to do that. And the second tip is, you should not overlook negative space. All right, take a look at these two examples. The second, again, the second one is uh, looking good, right? Because I have left enough negative space around the text. Okay, that's the trick. And the third one is you should not imitate others logo yes uh, you get inspired from you know top youtubers you want to replicate uh, replicate their pattern their content on all on all that but you should not do that it won't build trust okay but uh, the second thing is unknowingly you may uh, replicate someone else logo or unknowingly someone else may replicate your logo uh, it happens, we call it as design overload issue. It, uh, it generally arises when you use a DIY design platform to design a logo like, like Canva because everybody is using same templates, 
right? Unfortunately, the so-called DIY design platforms never address this issue except PickMaker. We came up with the mad button. All right, this is an AI powered tool. Uh, what this uh, uh, this particular tool do is you are seeing a burger template here. Uh, uh, here, right? So when you click on the mat button, you'll see an another burger with a different font and a different color. Again, what I'm trying to say is most of us are not graphic designers. We don't know how to change a font. We don't know how to change a background color and all that. For people like us, mat button is a great thing. Okay. In just a couple of clicks, you can create a unique logo for your YouTube channel. And uh, how to create a YouTube banner. Again, you can use PicMaker. We have loads of templates. Here are the three, uh, you know, best practices you need to keep in mind while creating a banner for your YouTube channel. The first one is you should include your upload schedule. Okay. Let's imagine uh, somebody is visiting your YouTube channel and you added this uh, in on your YouTube banner, like new video every Saturday morning. What it means to that visitor, it means that you are active in this platform and you are giving a strong reason for them to subscribe your YouTube channel. All right. Try adding your upload schedule in your YouTube banner. And the second one is your, your banner should be optimized for different devices. All right. The banners that you're creating, uh, uh, that you have created for your YouTube channel fits only for a uh, laptop or PC. Okay. If you, uh, if you load that banner uh, from your iPhone, Android phone, or even iPad, uh, you'll notice that your banner cuts off at both sides. Okay. YouTube banner is not responsible. You cannot create a YouTube banner that is responsible, but at PicMaker we have published a, uh, you know, tutorial uh, video with a hack. With that hack, you can create a YouTube banner that fits for all devices. Let me know uh, in the chat section if you want to watch this tutorial video, post the session. I'll uh, drop the link of this tutorial uh, through email, right? And the third uh, thing you need to keep in mind is you need to showcase your content. Let's say you have, uh, you are a food blogger, okay? Add food in your YouTube YouTube banner. Let's say you are a gamer. Okay, add a joystick or a gaming console in your YouTube banner. That's how you uh, show your channel visitors what your channel is all about. Okay, nobody's going to visit your channel and watch all your videos and understand what your channel is all about. Okay, you should communicate this on your YouTube banner. And these are the things you need to avoid while creating a YouTube banner. Take a look at these two examples. Which one looks good? Again, the second one, right? Just like how I, uh, you know, said in the logo part, your YouTube banner should be minimal, okay? You should not overcrowd with text. You should not overcrowd with icons or illustrations. And the second thing is you should not, you know, forget to update it regularly. It doesn't mean you have created a YouTube banner, published it on your channel and forget it. Okay. This is an example. This uh, is the YouTube banner of Unbox uh, Therapy. I hope you all know Unbox Therapy. Um, and I hope you all know that uh, recently uh, Google, you know, conducted the IO event. So since this particular event is uh, relatable to this particular channel, they have updated their YouTube banner. That's how you need to, you know, frequently update your YouTube banner so that people know that you are constantly, you know, you are constantly updating your channel. You are not idle in, the, in that particular platform. And the third one is you should not violate copyright or trademark laws. Law. As you notice, we uh, see a mobile phone image here, right? It doesn't mean you have to go to internet, download some images and add it uh, in your YouTube banner. You cannot do that because every image you see uh, in the internet, it comes with uh, some copyrights. If you use that, the owner of that image will sue you. So what is the quick workaround for this? You can use PicMaker. At PicMaker, we have millions of stock images that two for free. If you didn't check out PicMaker, please go sign up and use PicMaker. And the second tip to increase your subscriber base, building visual element for a strong channel presence. All right. Apart from 
logo and YouTube banner, we are looking at YouTube thumbnails. I hope you all know Neil Patel. He's a celebrity uh, in the digital marketing space. What is uh, the common thing that you see uh, from all these uh, thumbnails? Joe? What is the common thing you see from all these thumbnails? Well, of course, his picture. All right. Then... One more thing is there. Can you guess it's uh, Neil Patel smiling? <laughs> <laughs> he smiles all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's his smile, definitely. Branding of colors, color palette is the same. Correct, yes. Correct. The orange color and the back, black color. Because yeah. why he is using the orange color? Because it is... It is his brand color. That's why he's using. It's not only using it uh, on his thumbnails. He's, he's using it on his website. He's using it on uh, on other uh, materials, digital assets like ebooks, flyers, and all that. And the second example, I hope you all know Gary V. What is the common thing you see here? I hope you all will guess the color. Apart from that, there's something there. Highlighting. Extra large letters. That's a good catch. Caps lock. That's a good catch. He uses the same font. Yes. Yes, that's right. He uses the same font. He uses his brand font, okay, to be specific. And the third example is, da example is Danco. Again, uh, he used his, uh, you know, brand font and brand color. So two things. One is you need to figure out a brand color for your channel. And the second one is you need to figure out a brand font for your channel. If you didn't, you have to go uh, learn color psychology and pick up a color that, uh, you know, relates with your uh, target audience and pick up a font that uh, looks good for your target audience. All right. Let's imagine that you have a brand color and a brand font. What would you do? Would you remember your, uh, you know, brand color code, write it down and, um, you know, type it every single time when you are uh, designing a YouTube banner or a YouTube thumbnail? You, you cannot do that because that takes a lot of efforts, right? Quick work around this. You can use the brand kit at Pickmaker. Okay, what is it? You can uh, you can upload your brand logo, brand font, and uh, you know brand uh, brand colors. For an example, this somebody said uh, in a participant that uh, he's working uh, for a digital media agency, right? Especially this uh, digital marketing agencies have different clients. Okay, for an example, if you have a different uh, YouTube channel to maintain you will have different branding elements, okay? You can have multiple brand kits on Pickmaker, all right? That's easy. How, how it can help you whenever you create a YouTube thumbnail or a YouTube banner, this comes in handy. This will sit in the sidebar, okay? Whenever you create it, you can just pick your brand color and just a click, you can change the entire theme of your uh, template. And I just talked about YouTube thumbnail, right? With you, with Pickmaker, you can create engaging YouTube thumbnails because again, we have tons of YouTube thumbnail templates. And the third tip, you should find your next super fan by exploring new horizons. What do I mean by new horizon? I mean, the other social media platforms like Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, all right? Uh, I get it. You are already stuck up with a lot of work. You have scripts to write. You have videos to edit. You have, you know, you have to publish it on YouTube. You have a lot of uh, things to do. Why you should, uh, you know, come to different other social media platforms. Let's uh, see what the top creators are doing. This is MKBHD. He's a famous, you know, tech YouTuber. Whenever he published a video on YouTube, he posted uh, on Twitter. All right. Take a look at Gary V. Gary V's uh, content distribution strategy is different. Uh, whenever he create a long form content, he chunk it into different 
pieces and publish them on Instagram, uh, Instagram Reels, Facebook, LinkedIn and all that. And this is a famous food vlogger on YouTube. They are hyperactive on Pinterest. These people are already famous on YouTube. Why they should come to other social media platforms like Pinterest, Facebook and Twitter? Because you don't know, you may find your next subscriber on Twitter. You may find your next subscriber on Instagram. That's how you should work on. That's why you should work on other platforms. Okay. But again, uh, there are some time uh, constraints, right? You don't have uh, time to work on other social media platforms. That's one challenge. And the other challenge is, let's say, let's take a digital marketing agency as an example. Uh, uh, for an instance, if they are working uh, from the european region and their clients are uh, you know th their clients are in the north american region there's a difference in ti time zone right uh, we have every social media uh, platforms has some best time to post all right for an instance if uh, for instagram if it is uh, 6 in the evening okay and uh, to put it in a funny way uh, let's say you have uh, you have a date at that particular time would you open your laptop in front of your date or would you check your phone and upload that single piece of social media content in front of your date no right that's why to address all these issues you need to automate your social media effort okay to do that you should use pickmaker social with pickmaker social you can sit one day okay you can chunk your uh, youtube channel into different parts connect different social media platforms uh, to a uh, pick maker and you know you can schedule it in one shot okay that's called automation with that you can sit back relax and do your next script and that's not all you can uh, you can measure your social media efforts using Pickmaker analytics and you can find which platform is working for you for, uh, in this example instagram business is working good when compared to Facebook and LinkedIn, what it means? It means if you want to double down your efforts on in Instagram business, you can do that. Or if you want to focus on Facebook or LinkedIn, you should double down your efforts. And you can find which type of content is working for you. What do I mean by which type of content? There are different types of content like humorous content, educational content, entertainment content, edutainment content. So you can try out, you can do A-B testing and find out which one gives you more impression, which one gives you more uh, reach and engagement. And the last tip I would say to improve your subscriber base is you need to foster your, your engagement and interaction. So Austin Events, I think uh, Austin, Austin events have like around 5 million subscribers, but still he's replying to, uh, to his, you know, subscribers comments. And Vanessa, Vanessa is a famous, uh, you know, uh, English uh, tutor on uh, YouTube. I think she have like around 1.5, I'm not sure, 1.5 million, but she's again, you know, uh, responding to her subscribers comments. And Satori Graphic is a famous uh, graphic designer on on YouTube. He have uh, you know five million uh, subscribers, but still he is responding to his subscribers' comments. Why Th these guys are big shots on YouTube? This these guys don't have time with that time uh, with the, with the time of you know uh, commenting to. Uh, uh, commenting to their subscribers they they may uh, sit on a sit on the next uh, script right why they are doing this because this is how they build trust okay this is how they uh, convey their non subscribers what they can get after they subscribe to their youtube channel you should also do that and that's all from me today i am handing over this to uh, joe uh, she'll take care of the other two parts in the session all right thank you praveen for that very informative um set of strategies that you just mentioned uh well i mean i got to learn a lot from you as well so thank you for that um so we're just moving on to the next part which is how to create content which is worth 
4,000 hours, right? And creative strategies to get you there faster. Well, um, I'm sure we all have our own set of ideas and ways that work for us, but this is mainly from my experience and from um, you know what we have seen as marketers in the industry. Um, this is just an overview of what I have learned over the period that you know I was a content creator and someone who is constantly trying to promote uh, my channel and to bring out something worthwhile from it. Um, so if you could just move to the next part of the slide. Yes. So the first most important strategy is to create long and short with videos. This is, I think, one huge confusion that we have uh, sometimes whether to create long videos or short videos, what works for us? Uh, well, I will tell you, um, as a creator on Steve.ai, we have the option to create long and short form videos at the same time. Uh, from coming from uh, the statistics point of view, there are close to 62% of the world that is creating long and short form videos at the moment. There are close to 2.6 billion uh, users on YouTube currently. So it's important that you create um, long form and short form videos, but at the same time, see what works for your audience. Now, if you're trying to create short form videos, make sure that uh, you're creating this mainly for your audience on Instagram or, uh, or let's cater to the Gen Z audience because they are mostly on Instagram or platforms like uh, Instagram, like TikTok. If you're coming to the audience on YouTube, it's preferably uh, longer videos. These are videos that are inherently uh, used uh, for, let's say, if you're creating, if you're looking to create content for your page or looking to create content for uh, your website. I think this is where long form videos come into play. Let's move to the next part. So next, coming to unlocking the power of title, description, and tags. I think it's absolutely necessary to create the right title and the right description for your YouTube videos. In this case, uh, creating a title uh, comes down to your SEO strategy, where you're trying to create a unique title, but at the same time, try to keep it simple and not uh, over-exaggerated. Try to keep it within the time limit and within the uh, number of words that YouTube allows necessarily. Um, in this case, as you can see, it's a very short title. It's not a well elaborate title. Uh, this contains the exact information that you're going to be spreading through your video. It's not uh, overpowering. It's not overloaded. Uh, as you can see, it simply says how to start your first business, uh, the castle mine. So it literally has the gist of what your video is literally going to be about. Next, going on to the description, if you notice, I have picked out a description that I have used for Steve.ai. And if you see, I have the exact script from the beginning till the end of what is really being spoken in the video. If you notice, I have uh, every single point from the video because sometimes uh, the viewer might have missed out intricate details of the video. And that is what is given in the description below. Next. I have taken a very interesting example from Vogue. Uh, if you notice, Vogue is obviously um, a very popular magazine. And here they are trying to promote uh, a video where Kendall Jenner is present. And if you notice, some of the tags that they have used is not only related to uh, the Kardashians, but it also has stuff like celebrity home, um, Q and A's, and a bunch of other stuff that is related to Kendall Jenner and uh, basically something that's in the close vicinity of the person that you're speaking about. Let's move to the next part. Uh, it's absolutely important to build strong relationships with other creators. Uh, this I have experienced uh, not only because I'm a musician, I have to collaborate with other musicians, uh, but at the same time, I have also seen that content grows when you collaborate. At the same time, there's growth, there is uh, creativity, there is um, so much that you can learn from the other person. At the same time, you're spreading your awareness and your creativity 
through uh, by collaborating with other artists. Um, and these are like-minded people. So what happens is when two like minds come together, there's magic created. As you can see, I have collaborated uh, with uh, someone else from our team. At the same time, at the moment, we're also collaborating, uh, Praveen and I. We're from different teams, but we're still collaborating because uh, when we come together, we create something new. So, and I think it's very important to collaborate. As you can see, we have also collaborated with Luke Hobson, uh, who is also an influencer and somebody who has a wide knowledge in the content area. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the end screens and cards. This, I think, um, is definitely a way to uh, sort of get your audience to communicate with you at the end. Um, we at Steve.ai have a beautiful end card that we create, which is called the outro video, where you can add in your logo right here. At the moment, I've just added subscribe because, I mean, you can go ahead and add what you like. Uh, but this space is kept for you to add your logo. And then you can mention, like, and share, and uh, mention your handles at, as well. So if everyone is wondering what Steve.ai is, we are uh, an AI platform where we create videos. Uh, we convert text into videos in a matter of minutes. Uh, of course, you have constraints like time. You're wondering, where are my resources? Uh, do I have enough money for this? Well, it's a three-in-one package. You have your resources, everything covered. Uh, you get to make videos in the span of just three minutes, which means, think about it, you can literally make 50 videos in one single day, which goes on to make, I don't know, like hundreds of videos in a month, which completely covers your watch hours. The 4,000 watch hours that you're looking for is covered by simply creating videos using Steve where the AI does all the work for you. It just converts your text into a video in a matter of seconds, literally in a matter of seconds. So you should definitely check it out. It's steve.ai. Uh, we will definitely uh, paste the link below. And I can't wait for you guys to um, you know, see what the surprise is. I think you'll be excited for that as well, just a reminder. Uh, moving on to the end screen of Pickmaker, this again is a very uh, beautiful work of art. As you can see, it has a beautiful background uh, displaying what your video is about. At the same time, it's promoting your, um, your handles, your Facebook, Instagram, YouTube handles as well. Next, moving on to creating a themed playlist. This helps your audience to um, uh, sort of to streamline your audience. Now, let's say there is a particular kind of video that you want a particular set of audience to watch. You can put them under a playlist. As you can see, the next uh, slide, you can see that on Steve, we have created different kinds of playlists. We have the video bulletin. We have the human versus AI series, the templates. We have the minute mates. So all these are different playlists that we have created targeting different kinds of audiences. For example, if it's somebody who is looking to make, uh, who's looking to watch only short-term videos, then we have the Minute Mates, which is less than a couple of minutes. Then we have your video bulletin if you're looking for information apart uh, from just the tutorials that we create. And similarly, we have the Human versus AI series, where we we directly convert or recreate ads that are already created for example if there is an apple ad uh, we have shown you how to recreate that using steve which is the human versus ai series so playlists help to uh, streamline your your audiences uh next moving on to a very interesting uh 10 million public shorts, views, hacks, and tips for going viral. Um, so I would like to hear in the chat box, what are some of the strategies that you use to boost your uh, promotions of your videos? If you could just mention it in the chat box, please. I'd love to hear. Current trends, very interesting. 
Hashtag, yes. Oscar is saying CTA. Oscar saying CTA, lovely. Haven't started yet. Okay, well, that's of course why you're here. <laughs> All right, I see you. Trending music. <coughs> wow, that's wonderful. Great. Uh, yes, I will definitely be speaking a little on trends and hashtags. So let's move to the attention grabbing captions and transitions that work. Uh, you might be wondering, hey, why should my caption be interesting? You know, my video is interesting enough. So why should I have a cool caption? Well, if you notice, a lot of videos direct your direct their videos towards the caption, which means the video remains limited, but the caption is extensive. This way, you can spread your information in a lot uh, in a lot more wider manner. You don't have to restrict it to just your video. For example, if you see, I have added captions to my video. Now, in this case, what happens, your video is speaking at the same time your caption speaks as well. So in this case, you get to um, convey to your audience in two different ways. One is through your caption in your video and through your captions um, that is below where you can elaborately speak about uh, your video in detail. So it's absolutely important to keep your caption short, provided your video is long. But if your video is short, make sure that your caption is long and elaborates the video much more. Next is to participate in trending challenges and reels. I'm sure this is something that we're all interested in. We all love creating uh, trends, trying to become viral, boost our videos. It's absolutely necessary that you do that, provided you add your own bit of creativity to it as well. Uh, as you can see, the first video that you see is a Wes Anderson uh, reel that we had created using Steve. Uh, and the next two viral uh, videos could be using different filters. You can try out different fil filters on Instagram, on YouTube as well now because you have your YouTube shorts. You see a ton of filters that are being used. So get creative, add in a little bit of color, add in a little bit of attitude, add in a little bit of creativity, and you get your uh, videos to go viral. Well, the next pointer is very interesting because you must be wondering, why even tell the audience what I'm doing behind the scene? I just want my video to be the center of attention, right? Uh, but some of the very interesting facts about uh, showcasing your videos uh, behind the scene is to make them understand that this whole process is human, that it is being created by a human being. Your video might be mind blowing, but to make people understand that this can be created by each one of them watching the video, right? For example, if you see Zach King, how many of you know Zach King? Anybody who follows Zach King? Nobody? Nobody, is, uh, nobody knows Zach King? Okay, so he is the king of transitions. If you see, all his videos are about illusions. And if you notice, he's clearly showing you how he created the video. You'd actually be mind blown by how he creates it because it's that simple. When you watch it, you're just like, wow, where does this video come from? But when you actually watch what really happens at the back, you'd be mind blown. So behind the scenes really helps uh, you connect with your audience because they sort of understand that this is a man-made process and they can do this as well. All right, so I hope that was useful. Um, I mean, this is something that I have learned from my experience. And if you have any doubts, yeah, you could go ahead and ask. So let's uh, read some of the questions we left out in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have more questions, go ahead and pop it. Okay, Stan is saying, do you have info on how long it takes people to read captions? Like a five word caption takes two seconds, which is a eight word simple worded caption may take four seconds. I'd use the info to know how long to keep that scene on screen. 
Okay, so um, currently we don't have uh, such information, but what we would suggest is uh, stand, uh, there's uh, some data on social media. If, uh, if a video is short, it is performing, uh, is performing well, especially in YouTube shots and Instagram reels. Short videos are performing well than long reels and YouTube shots. Okay, you need to make it real short because end of the day, it's a simple hack. Uh, the algorithm identify, uh, identify if somebody is watching your real video again and again. Okay, creating short reels and uh, short uh, uh, YouTube shots is a, is a trick to do that. Can you speak more about how PicMaker helps consolidate so many of the responsibilities spread across the platforms? I just visited your site and it is amazing. Thank you, thank you, Ray. So uh, we started our platform as a DIY design plat uh, DIY design platform, but uh, now we tra transition to become uh, you know full fledged social media management suite. You can you know literally connect uh, different social media. Uh, platforms and uh, uh, schedule your post that's not all we uh, recently rolled out uh, pickmaker analytics with that you can um, you know you can connect your multiple social media accounts and uh, measure your results there's something called as combined uh, uh, combined uh, account performance with that you can you can uh, see the analytics of all the social media all your social media efforts and there are a lot of features are uh, in the line for example competitor analysis we have something called as mad text which is a ai uh, powered uh, tool with that you can you know uh, we can create a lot of videos we can put a lot of uh, efforts but we when we you know publish it uh, on uh, on youtube or on or on different social media platforms and sit to write a youtube description or uh, a social media caption or you know our uh, uh, writers block will hit that's where this mad text uh, comes into place you can just throw some words about your post and it will generate you you know engaging captions and uh, next big feature that we are planning is social inbox. It, it consolidates all your social me media inboxes like uh, Facebook inbox, you know, Instagram inbox and all that. Just a consolidated view uh, to interact with your fans. Thanks for asking this, Ray. Yeah. Uh, there was one question. Do you have examples or tips for artists who want to sell their art via youtube um well it's more than staying relevant i think it's important for you to create something that's unique to your art form at the same time it's also important to share with your audience what they are looking for than what you're looking to give out so it's important to understand the need of the audience first before uh you try putting something out now it's let's say you're uh selling a product that has to do with hiking right instead of saying i love these hiking shoes you could probably say uh these hiking shoes will be of great help if, if you're a mountaineer so if you sort of put it out there that uh your particular product or your art form is important to the person who is buying your art form then it will be more convincing to them than you trying to show it from a place of you wanting to do it, right? So it's important to keep it creative, uh, crisp, but at the same time, try to uh, push it to the audience in a way they'd want to perceive it than the way you'd want to sell it. Thank you for that. Marco is saying, as if the shot ends, they have to see it again. To read it specifically if captivating yes marco that's what we said you got the point ray you saying definitely makes things much easier for people starting out it can be overwhelming if you don't have to uh a manager to handle all that thanks for the explanation Renee. thank you ray how to make other creators relation uh, by that i think you mean how to collaborate with other people uh, the main way to collaborate is to uh, join webinars like these where you understand 
there are like-minded people coming in together or you can join communities on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube where like-minded people come together and you can share your views and collaborate. Um, at the same time, if, if it's a particular product that you're keen on working on using hashtags, you can try and find other video creators using that and you can collaborate through that as well. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, Marco is asking, now is it easier to get the 10 million views or the 4,000 har with long or series? Can Steve AI suggest series script? Yes. Joe, do you want to take that? Sure, sure. Uh, well, with Steve, you can create uh, videos up to 20 minutes and you can create really short videos, which could also include poems or little uh, videos on, on minimal information that you're looking for. So you can create long form as well as short form videos. And uh, more or less on an average, they all take uh, less than five minutes to create. Uh, so you could go ahead and create as many videos as you want to achieve your 4,000 um, watt hour target. Uh, at the same time, coming to your next question, does Steve.ai suggest series scripts? Well, we have close to 200 plus inbuilt scripts available, depending on the kind of uh, videos that you're looking to make. Now, if you're looking for birthday videos, business related videos, um, anything that you're looking forward to. We have that inbuilt already. So you just have to click on that and it creates the script for you and you and the AI automatically converts the script into a video for you. Um, so yeah, your that's your answer. <laughs> Adding to Joe's uh, point, uh, Marco, currently uh, this uh, YouTube Shorts is a new feature, right? Whenever a social media platform launch a new feature, they'll give algorithm boost. Okay, so creating uh, more shots videos is a trick to get, uh, you know, more views. I think, uh, you know, getting 10 million views is easy for you if you, uh, you know, use TA, Steve AI and start uh, creating more uh, shots videos and upload it regularly, you can easily get it. If we sign up for Steve AI or uh, Pickmaker, will we have a chance to reach out to you if you have questions? Um, I think Ray, uh, you can uh, reach out to us anytime. Uh, my email ID is, let me quickly uh, drop it here. Praveen at animaker.com. If you have any doubts on Pickmaker, you can and you know feel free to reach out to me. And uh, yeah. Joe, please drop your, yes. If you have any questions regarding Steve, you can uh, reach out using this email ID. Yeah, okay. Coming back to the question that I just answered, if Steve.ai suggests series scripts, what I mean by that is uh, we have a ton of suggestions that are available for you, uh, but it will not uh, create a script automatically depending on your title. Now, let's say it will pick from the range that it already has, which is within the 200 uh, scripts that are available. Apart from that, if you want to go, you can definitely go to tools like ChatGPT. It will create a script for you. You can take that and copy paste it on the Steve and it will, it will convert that into a video. How to increase views with short videos? It's absolutely got to be engaging, number one. Uh, at least the first three to four seconds has to be um, super engaging because this is the time that the audience actually sits will decide whether they want to sit through the video or not so the first few seconds is very important you could maybe start off with an exclamation like hey oh my god you don't have something interesting to show you at the end of um, wait till the end of the video to find out or if you can have a disclaimer or something exciting at the beginning of your video that will create curiosity curiosity and at the same time it'll keep the audience engaged throughout the video. So it's important to keep it short and precise, but at the same time, more relevant and convincing. All right. So thank yeah. you guys. Thanks again. We are so happy uh, to have you here today. And Joe, yeah. thank thanks, you, thanks thank for you. your contribution. It was a value driven webinar. It was loaded with a lot of value and we had wonderful participants too. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, guys. It was so informative. Thank you, Praveen, for having me. And yeah, we're looking forward to do this more often.
Uh, we have a lot of uh, webinars coming up, so feel free to sign in, guys. And yeah, there's a lot of learning to do. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.